Have I ever wondered what's actually the difference between watercolors, gouache, and poster paint? Because in this video, we're going to talk about all the differences and similarities so you know exactly what to use. Watercolors, gouache, and poster colors are all water-soluble paints, which means all three can be reactivated with water. For the best results, you want to use watercolor paper for watercolors, but for gouache and poster colors, you can also use either watercolor paper or any other thicker paper as well. You can buy watercolors in pans, tubes, and sometimes even in a liquid form. Gouache is usually sold in tubes and poster colors often come in jars and sometimes tubes as well. So watercolors, gouache, and poster colors are all made out of pigments, binders, and other additives. But the way they behave and look depends on the size of the pigments and what else was mixed in. Watercolors, for example, are made out of finely ground pigments which can spread more evenly over the paper. This is one of the reasons why watercolors are so transparent compared to other paints. Gouache, on the other hand, is made from pigments that are larger and they would rather sit on top of the paper, which makes the paint more opaque. And compared to gouache, the pigments of the poster colors are even larger, which means they are even more opaque. Unlike watercolors, gouache and poster paint also have additional additives that make the paint even more opaque. But in general, the quality of the binders and additives that are used in gouache are higher quality compared to poster paint. But keep in mind that lower quality watercolors can also be more opaque and chalky when there are a lot more fillers than there are pigments that stretch the paint. Since watercolors are transparent, you can create a painting in multiple layers to create depth from light to dark by thinning down the paint with water. So with watercolors, you rather stain the paper than covering it with paint. With watercolors, you also want to leave out the white space as you can just apply white watercolors paint on top to cover it up. That's why you usually need to plan out your painting and mask the areas you want to keep white with masking fluid or tape. Watercolors also dry slowly and vibrant and when they do, they can dry evenly or more textured depending on what paint, paper and technique you're using. Since watercolors are water soluble, you can reactivate the paint and lift it off with a tissue paper. But how well you can do that depends on the pigments and the paper you're using. You can also use lots of other watercolor techniques to create different effects that have a more spontaneous feel or you can also create something more detailed in your illustrations. And you can even combine watercolors with gouache to add highlights or to make the watercolors more opaque as well. Now compared to watercolors, Gouache and especially poster colors are highly opaque. This means you can paint from light to dark and from dark to light and even paint on colored paper. Since the pigments are larger compared to watercolors, with these paints you rather cover the paper with paint. Compared to watercolors, the paint dries quickly and looks flat and matte once dry. Keep in mind that with gouache, the colors that are dark tend to lighten and light colors tend to darken when they're dry. Traditional gouache and poster colors can also be reactivated with water, so you can change things up or lift off the paint. Poster paint is also really vibrant, but since some colors are made with multiple pigments, it's easy to create muddy paints or less vibrant colors when you mix them together. But you can still layer both gouache and poster colors or thin down the paint with water to create light layers of paint, create ingredients and layer them on top of each other. But because they are so opaque, the result might look less delicate and more grainy compared to watercolors. You also need to be careful not to accidentally reactivate the paint underneath and create muddy colors. Another big difference between all these three paints is their light fastness. Poster paint, for example, is rather made for scanning and reproduction rather than for displaying the art. That's why they are less expensive and not very light fast, which means the colors can fade over time when exposed to sunlight for too long. Gouache, on the other hand, is usually sold in two different versions. In general, the difference is that the designer gouache is made for scanning the artwork rather than displaying it, so the pigments are usually less light fast. When it comes to watercolors, you can get them in students or artist quality. Here the difference is the amount and the type of pigments. Student quality has usually less and rather synthetic pigments because they are cheaper. 
artist quality usually has a lot more and higher quality pigments that are more rare in nature. And this is one of the reasons why they are so expensive. But with liquid watercolors, you need to be extra careful because some are dye based, which means they can fade over time as well. So what is the paint great for and what should you choose? So watercolors are great if you want to create loose and sometimes unexpected textured results. It's really relaxing to see the paint melt on the paper and how it melts with other colors. There are a lot of options how you can use them and play around with them. The only thing to keep in mind is the watercolor rules, such as the different painting techniques, the amount of water and paint you need, the timing, and also sometimes plan your painting ahead. Gouache and poster colors are great if you want to create bold art and flat illustrations that you can scan later. They give you a few options how to use them and they're usually easier to use compared to watercolors. You can always reactivate the paint and continue changing up your painting until you are happy. The only difference between those two is the opacity and the quality. Keep in mind that poster colors are a lot more opaque and cheaper so the quality can be different depending on the brand. So let me know what is your favorite medium to paint with. If you have any other questions about those paints, let me know. And if you want to learn more about different types of paints and watercolors, you can check out the videos right here. Thank you so much for watching, have a wonderful day, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!